having an incredible case of deja vu. I'm pretty sure there's multiple videos of me <laughs> doing this. And I immediately was like, what am I gonna listen to next? I can't plan my reading. I'm not reading for content, I'm reading for joy. Did I get everything on my list done? No, which doesn't, it sounds worse than it is. Been there, done that. <laughs> Pantsing, messy, just like having a time of it. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to an admittedly very weird angle, but <laughs> you're just kind of propped on the table. Welcome to Friday afternoon. I'm getting a little bit of a jump on the weekend. Thank you very much to my boss and I'm gonna take full advantage of it. So original plan was rain, rain, rain all weekend long. And now it's like super duper overcast right now and we're gonna see what's gonna happen, but I'm going to take a walk, try and figure out what I wanna do and take it from there. And I thought I would take you guys along for the ride. It's been a minute since I've done a vlog. So I am currently listening to One of the Good Guys by Araminta Hall, which is, I would say like a feminist mystery, multi POV. We have a man and a woman who separately have just moved to kind of like this small town, both sort of kind of like escaping their lives and two women who are on a women's march through the village wind up going missing. So we've got some mystery going on here. So I will explain that way better in a little bit, but that's what I'm listening to right now. And I just started reading Meet the Benedettos, I Had a Thing for Half a Minute by Katie Katunga. I'll pop it up over here, it's on my nightstand. But I'm super jazzed to just have a jump on the weekend. And other than must do's like the chores and the boring stuff. I don't have much of a plan. I really need to write my book. So anyway, I'm gonna get changed. We're gonna go for a walk and I'll see you when I see you. Hello, I am back. I had a very good walk. Very sweaty. <laughs> So it's good, but it's supposed to be cold again. So enjoying it while it lasts, but happy Friday, happy weekend. I'm going to give you a better description of the book I'm reading in just a minute, but it is sunny now. It is nice out. I have no idea what I want to do. I will be perfectly honest. There was a part of me that was a little bit jazzed for a rainy weekend because I kind of just want to lay in bed and watch movies, but I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen. But I'm making a really good dent in this book and I'm really enjoying it. So let me give you the description of it first and then I'll give you some more thoughts and feelings about it. So I did talk about this in like a most anticipated, it came out in January, but just to refresh anybody's memory. So it says two young women vanish in a seaside town at the cliff's edge. Nobody is who they seem. So we are following kind of three main characters, Cole, Leonora and Mel. So Cole has left London behind. He has moved to this small cottage and it says on a remote stretch of coast, a remote stretch of coast words. And he's kind of grappling with why his marriage failed and what happened and all of that. And he meets this woman, Leonora, who lives just a short walk from his house. She moved there just before he did. And it says she is trying to acclimate to the hostile landscape and they wind up forming a connection. So she's preparing for her latest art exhibit. Like I said, he's kind of grappling with the law or not the loss of his marriage, the falling apart of his marriage and trying to figure out kind of the what next. And then we have two young women activists who are raising awareness about gendered violence disappear while passing through on New Year's Eve. So an investigation starts to get launched. And what's really interesting about this book is you're getting kind of multiple perspectives on on the same thing, not in a 56 days Karen, um, Catherine Ryan Howard way where you're seeing the same scene through two POVs, but you're seeing the relationships from both perspectives and a little bit of how scenes play out and how different people, different characters are interpreting them. I'm a little bit intentionally vague, but there's also some great mixed media in it. So I am listening to the audiobook listening to the audiobook <laughs> and it has, so it has multi narrators for each of the main POVs and then it has additional ones because it has 
like a podcast element. It has social media posts. It, it's reading out like emails and it's not Twitter, but Facebook posts, like things like that. And you're actually hearing like the clicking of keyboards and you're hearing the newscast. You're hearing like the do, 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 do at the beginning of the news. So it's really well done from an audiobook perspective. So I will say it got a little, it was a little bit slow to start for me, I found, but I'm really glad I stuck with it because it's getting so, so much better, like so much more engaging. So we start with Cole's POV and start to understand his story and then it rolls from there. So I will keep you guys posted. I expect to finish it during the course of this vlog because I'm already 70% of the way into it. It's not a long book and it's only Friday afternoon. So, or Friday evening, Friday at... 440. So we are, we are, I am going to finish it this weekend, probably tomorrow. So stay tuned. And yeah, that's kind of all I know. So like I said, with the exception of the basic boring life stuff, like housework and got to go get some groceries and things like that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And I kind of don't know what I want to do. So I am, this is the week of daylight savings, so Sunday was daylight savings. I definitely feel like a little bit off kilter still. I love that it's light out at the end of the day. I hate that it is so dark again in the morning. I just struggle with it so much. I I know I'm not the only person who's like, can we just not with the, with the <laughs> it's like, daylight has been saved. There's so many funny memes on Instagram, but like could do without it, but whatever. So it is what it is. So between that and then the week before, I was on my first business trip in forever, which successful from a business trip standpoint, but so threw me off my game way too much. And I feel like I barely caught a breath when I got back from that. And then it was like, we flipped right into daylight savings two days later and I just have not recovered just don't recover like I used to my friends. I just don't. I just don't. But I am hoping to spend this weekend getting a little bit back on track, which we can collectively laugh at because I've been trying to get on track since January and it's not, it's not happening. So I feel like some things are going well. Some things I haven't figured out yet. I am really struggling with my writing because I don't, I just don't know where to go next. I feel like I had had like a really good rhythm with revisions and it's just starting to feel way too big, way too hard to tackle. I think I've made some good choices in terms of changing a POV, deleting a character. Like I think I'm making the right choices for the book but I'm having a hard time with these huge edits because it obviously ripples all the way through. And I'm having a hard time seeing the story. I'm such a visual person. It's like I actually need to just like lay it out on a wall, but I don't have just like a giant unobstructed wall that I can do this on. And I'm trying to do it through Excel spreadsheets and I'm trying to do it through note cards. Like I'm trying to do all the tricks I started watching all the videos again about how to revise successfully and I haven't found my groove and it's starting to mess with my head a lot. I'm getting in my head. I'm starting to just have all the anxiety and self-doubt and, and all the all the terrible things that come along with it. And I need a win. Like I really need a win. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. Like I'm making progress in some ways, but I feel like I'm... I feel like I am climbing up the icy hill and I'm just like kind of, but then I just slide back down and I kind of make a few steps and I slide back down. So anyway, my hope this weekend is to try and brainstorm and I don't know, try and figure some stuff out. So I have lots of wish list goals and I also feel like I need to just write like an everything list, not a to-do list, not just a weekend project list, like an every, like a brain dump, everything in my head, just put it all on paper and get it out and see what happens from there. So I had had this, I talked about this in my catch up video that I did with like, how's it, how are the goals going and stuff like that. And I was doing monthly challenges. I just <laughs> totally hit a senior moment there. <laughs> 
So January I did the yoga challenge, February I worked on my book every day, like I was doing well. And I actually kind of thought like the week away for work. And I wound up like I was, it was like five days of intentionally not working on it. And then I was like, let me just take the weekend and I was going to start fresh the Monday a couple days ago. So I wound up taking effectively one week off and I don't feel fresh back at it. But I had wanted to do like an everyday goal in March and I couldn't think of one at the beginning of the month and I knew that work was going to interrupt it. And I just feel very untethered and not in a good way and unstructured and I didn't make my habit tracker and I didn't even make my migraine headache tracker. Like I just, I've not, I've fallen off the boat, the bus, the everything. I've fallen down on the job this month um, with life. So it's only the 15th, I can start all over again. I can do a mid month like mini thing, but I'm just feeling, if you can't tell, real lost, real, real lost. So my goal this weekend is to I was going to make some dumb little to find myself. My goal this weekend is just to try and get a handle on things. How about that? And have some fun and relax and read my book and catch up with friends and family and, 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 and. So the first thing I'm going to do is get cleaned up because I just want to be cozy and clean and all that fun stuff. And then we'll see what else happens. And I'm sitting here staring. So my unrelated to everything other than my copy of Watch It Burn from Kristen Bird came. This came out this week. This was the only book on my releases this week. And I'm super excited about it. So I read the arc. I got to be part of her, like helped her launch the book with, with a bunch of other bookstagrammers. And it was super fun. So I'm excited to have this. And yeah, I love me a book. I love me a book. I would love to tell you I am trying not to buy too many books, but that's also kind of been an issue. But that's a story for... A different day so all right i'm gonna go you guys the battery light is flashing and i will talk to you in a in no time in your time i'll talk to you later Saturday morning. Um, very busy in the park today, which is not at all surprising. The benches are few and far between, and I'm a thousand percent sitting near a batting cage, so <laughs> there's only so much you can do about outdoor noise. But I am having a very good walk. I'm very much enjoying my day. I can't really see myself in this, so hopefully I'm actually in this. But it's cooler than yesterday hearing people behind me um but it feels fantastic this is like this is my time I think it's like 50 degrees it's breezy it's sunny it's not super humid or if it is you can't tell and I love it I love it I love it I love it so I'm having a really good morning which feels good I probably spent an hour and a half, I would say, working on my book this morning. So I did the Sisters in Crime right in at 8 a.m. And I did some more writing after that because I was in the middle of something and it felt good. I actually connected with two people because there's a chat when you're doing it um, who are one person in a similar situation of like cutting characters, big overhaul on the second draft, and then somebody else who a thousand percent like writes like me, <laughs> which is to say dancing, messy, just like having a time of it. And it was funny. They were like, I was hoping you had like a secret of like how to make it better. And I was like, if I figure it out, you'll be the first person to know. But like, yeah, if anybody knows how to do this better, I don't know how else to write. This is the only way I know how to do it. So it's not pretty, but it's happening. But the exciting thing, and I'm sorry, this is like, I'm not intentionally trying to be vague, but at the same time, I'm not 
uncomfortable talking about my story because it's just very precious to me still at this point. I feel like when all is said and done, maybe I'll talk more about like what's changed because so much has changed. But I found, like I think I finally zeroed in on a one-liner for my theme. So not like a man versus nature type of a theme, but like what's the book about? And I feel like I have an overarching thing and not like it's about a murder or something like that. But anyway, I'm sorry to be stupidly vague. It's just way too close right now to talk about stuff. But I did, I don't know if I mentioned this in a different vlog. I can't keep anything straight. I did wind up deleting a character. I think I said this last night. So that's a big part of the overhaul. And I know it's the right decision. It's still hard and I miss her. I really like her. I hope she'll have a second coming in a different book in a whole different way. But anyway, felt really good to do that. So I kind of just did my morning routine this morning. I did my gratitude journal, my intentions, like that whole thing. Um, kind of plans for the day, the things I want and like want that five things I want that I talked about in my life lately update, which I finally caught up on some comments last night. I wound up watching the Mets spring training game, which was fun. I haven't just sat and watched, and I mean, obviously baseball hasn't been on in a while, but I haven't just sat and watched a game obviously in a long time and not be super distracted by other stuff. So it was just good, it was just good. It was like just what I needed. But I did finally catch up on some comments. So thank you to everybody who commented on that video and everybody who watched it. I can't tell you how good it feels to not feel alone, to know other people are feeling the same way, to know anybody took even one nugget from that video of relatability or something that maybe helped. And that's what I do when I watch other people's videos is like when you can connect to somebody, even if it's just one line or one something can make all the difference. And I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for all of you guys, but thank you for watching it and saying you liked it. And it's really just helped me to talk through some stuff and get some perspective. And I'm still trying to figure so many things out unrelated, but I've seen this come up a couple times on Instagram and on YouTube. I am planning, by which I mean the ideas in my head, to do another bingo. I haven't started it. I haven't come up with prompts. I haven't done anything other than conceptually be like, yes, I want to do this again. So I don't know if I'm going to be ready in time for the first day of spring, which is probably like not even 10 days from now. I'll have to check my calendar or if I'm going to do like an April 1st or what. So it is going to come, I just don't know when. So I will obviously keep you guys posted, <laughs> figure it out, but I am missing it. I feel like my reading hasn't been, not that it hasn't been good, but it's definitely been directionless, which isn't bad. I don't wanna, I can't plan my reading. I'm not reading for content, I'm reading for joy. And I'm really, really enjoying this Araminta Hall book. It's definitely a bit heavy in the sense, actually, I feel like that's not even right. It's not like an easy breezy book. Like there's a lot of commentary about being a woman. I mentioned it yesterday. Um, it's definitely a feminist psychological thriller and about, it's, it's a lot of things to think about in terms of women owning their bodies, um, you know, stigmas that come with women who like choose not to have children, stigmas with women who choose career, just like the most basic feeling that I think a lot of women can relate to about walking home at night when it's dark and generally feeling unsafe in a lot of situations and things that are just inherent to being a woman. So it's woven in, not in a heavy handed way, but it's a very interesting take. And I hate using the word commentary because I feel like that makes it sound soapboxy and it's not, but the book has taken a turn that I like a lot and there's so much podcast, mixed media, news reports, Twitter threads woven into it. The audiobook is fantastic. There's so many different narrators. You're hearing like the swoosh noise when things are, um, messages are being sent and like the introduction music to the newscast. Like it's a really, really well done audiobook. So I will keep you guys posted. I think I have like 15% left to go. So I'll give you a full review when I'm done, but I'm really enjoying that. So. I'm going to keep on walking and make my way home. I don't know if I'm going to do the food shop today. I just really don't want to go. <laughs> I have plenty of food to eat today. I need to shop for next week. And I just really don't want to go. I don't feel like going to the supermarket. 
So you guys will find out when I do. And yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I'm gonna spend the rest of the day. So we'll all find out together, but there you go. But the short version is it is gorgeous out today and I'm living for this walk. All right, see ya. six I think the sunshine is so bright I'm not mad about it it's 20 of six but I feel like it's 3 30 in the afternoon and it's not so <laughs> messing with my schedule but in a better way so anyway I just just whatever half an hour ago got home from the supermarket unloaded all my groceries I had a real mental argument with myself about why I should go today why I shouldn't go today at the end of the day, I'm glad I went today. I knew tomorrow Audrey would thank today Audrey for going to the supermarket. And I had this idea that it would be less crowded because everyone would be out and about enjoying the afternoon. And I feel like I was kind of right. So it was good, it was good. Didn't get everything. It's always a little bit of a hit or miss, but it was good. But I do want to talk about, not sponsored, <laughs> my new current obsession. So this is Lemon Perfect Hydrating Water. It's blueberry flavored. I have not heard of this before. This was one of the best things about my work trip. I found this in the airport on the way home when I was looking for something to drink besides water. So I drink water all the live long day. So like, I don't need to be tricked into drinking it by making it nice and tasty, but this is so freaking good. Zero sugar, five calories if anybody cares, purified water, organic lemon juice, organic natural flavors, organic stevia, vitamin c exactly where you should be getting your vitamin c from um it's just so good it's just so good so anyway i'm totally obsessed and it was on sale at the supermarket so i picked up a couple more and yeah usually i don't peruse the drink aisle because i'm very much a creature of habit but anyway i'm totally enjoying this and just thought i would share it tastes like blueberry lemonade it's so good it's so good so i'm going to talk about the book that i'm physically reading Meet the Benedettos, which I don't think I talked about yesterday. But before I do that, I did finish One of the Good Guys by Araminta Hall. I had to think for half a second. I finished it, so I took my walk. It was fantastic. We already talked. I decided to knock out a bunch of laundry. I did all my cleaning. I finished the book while I was doing that. And I really liked this book. I feel like I still need to intelligently pull my feelings together about it and i'm having random lower back pains so if i'm grimacing that's why it started in the car ride home don't know why never do i this book was not what i expected it to be but in a really good way like i think i just expected it to kind of be like a straight up psychological thriller and there was psychological thriller to it but i cannot recommend the audiobook enough the mixed media representation that's not the right word the way the mixed media was portrayed in the audiobook and i mentioned this i know earlier but i feel like it just kept getting better and better with the newscasters and the podcasters and the blog posts and the comments and i think it just elevated the story in the way that a really fantastically done audiobook can elevate an already fantastic book so i really enjoyed this book there's definitely so much to talk about and think about again it's a thriller so i really want to not say much but we have the two women who went missing while they were on this woman's march and we have cole who was living there lenny who has a house there they became fast friends and how they become suspects and involved in the case and what happened to these missing women and I thought it was just so well done and I feel like there's so much room for conversation. There's definitely seeing the story from multiple sides. There's characters who agree and disagree on things, how they happened, how they played out, what was done. And I think it's just a really interestingly done story that just adds 
just like a whole other level to a psychological thriller. I don't know. I, my brain is still bopping about it. I finished it, I don't know, maybe like one o'clock this afternoon. And I immediately was like, what am I going to listen to next? And I was like, you're going to listen to music. I'm in such a mood to consume story right now, but I'm trying to process that book. But at the same time, I really wanted to not write during lunch, which doesn't, it sounds worse than it is. I do feel like sometimes I can do short sprints of writing or short, like I'm just doing like a certain activity. But when I was eating today and I wanted to go to the supermarket and it just like wasn't, wasn't the, wasn't a conducive atmosphere for writing. So anyway, so I read a little bit more. I almost hit myself in the face with the bookmark. <laughs> so I read a little bit more of this book. So it's Meet the Benedettos by Katie Katungo. So she wrote a book called Birds of California. She's a New York Times bestselling author. I have not read anything by her. And she also is the co-author with Candace Bushnell of Rules for Being a Girl. She lives in Boston, which I didn't know until I'm reading her blurb here on the back. But I want to say, so I will say, I heard about this book and I want to say that it was Amber from Books and Beaches who was talking about it that kind of shifted it back on my radar. And since I have for a while now been in this contemporary with a little weightiness, something to balance out my thrillers. I just read Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman last month. So anyway, I was looking for something a little bit different for me. And I will ask you to bear with me for half a second because this would not have been a selling point for me, but the book itself is a selling point for me. So it says an A-list movie star moves to Los Angeles next door to a family of five eligible sisters. And in this irresistible novel where the Kardashians meets Pride and Prejudice. So I am not a Kardashians watcher, follower. I have seen the show in the earlier seasons. There was that era on E! where anytime you turned on E! <laughs> it was just on. So I've seen it. I have some knowledge of them. I'm not pretending I have no idea what's going on with them. Um, I don't intentionally follow them, but sometimes I feel like they follow me, like you can't always escape it. But anyway, that would not have sold me on this book, but the premise of the book sold me on the book. So it says every family is complicated and the Benedettos are no exception. A few years after a reality TV show skyrocketed them to pop culture fame, the five 20 something sisters are living together in their parents' crumbling McMansion, nearly broke and teetering toward rock bottom. Lily Benedetto is all too aware that her family is viewed as a spectacle, but she's focused on holding herself and her family together. Social relevancy be damned. But when Charlie Bingley, a dashing star of major fantastic, moves into their Los Angeles neighborhood with his friend Will Darcy in tow, it looks as if the Benedetto's fortunes are about to turn around at last. So we get like a very inside Hollywood. I am envisioning, and I feel like I blame this on having just read Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I am envisioning Chris Evans as Mr. Fantastic, which I feel like is Captain America. And Will Darcy is just Mr. Darcy, because of course he is. And I am not, I am not a big Pride and Prejudice person, not in a, I don't like this, but I don't actively seek it out. Like I want to say I read it in college and I know, I, I like, I know Bridget Jones better than I know Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> just being honest here, just being honest here. And I am doing my How to Get Away with Murder rewatch and there is a Mr. Darcy reference in season one. I feel like if you know, you know, but I don't want to tell you what it is because it definitely gives something away. So anyway, I feel like sometimes just things collide and they all make sense. So I'm only 46 pages into it. It's fun. It's quick. It definitely, I can see the Kardashian-ish to it. Again, I know enough about them, but I don't know. I don't know what's the what with them these days or anything. I feel like I know the older stuff with them. And I am not, like I said, super steeped in Pride and Prejudice. So I'm sure a lot of references are going to go over my head. But we've had a Hollywood party. We've got the guys who are living together who are best friends from college, Chris and Will, or I mean, Charlie and Will. And then we have the sisters. And it's just fun so far. It's just fun so far. And as of now, it feels smart. It says it's hot and fun. So I don't know if that means it's going to be like steamy hot or if it's just we're in LA and yes, they a thousand percent live in Calabasas. So it's all there. It's all there for the taking. So I will keep you guys posted, but I'm enjoying it so far. 
and I just feel like it's just a fun, something different for me. So I don't know what audiobook I'm going to listen to next. This is not a problem I need to figure out today, but I will need to figure it out for tomorrow because I'm going to go for a walk tomorrow. It's the only thing on my for sure agenda. And yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. Oyster. It's all my oyster. But I'm having a good day, which feels good. Part of me wants to try to write. Part of me wants to give my brain a little bit of a break. I really am, have been procrastinating on my declutter. Ugh, every time I move a certain way and there's just like, it doesn't feel good guys. It doesn't feel good. I don't know what the heck it is, but like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what I want to do. This is what happens sometimes. I'll have like a wildly productive day and I haven't even hit a wall. Like I want to do something. I just don't know what it is. Anyone? I think I'm going to fold my laundry which sounds delightfully thoughtless. So I can do that and just maybe come up with an idea for what I want to do. But I'm just planning to kind of like lay low, nothing crazy, nothing going on here, nothing to see folks. And yeah, just enjoy that it's sunny and springy. And yeah, all is good, all is good. So that's what's up and you'll see what's up next, next. case of deja vu. I'm pretty sure there's multiple videos of me <laughs> doing this. Happy Sunday afternoon. It's 20 after one. I just finished running a couple of errands. I had a return window closing on me quicker than I kind of registered. So anyway, I just returned something. I hit up the supermarket because there were a couple things I couldn't get yesterday from my store or the store that I went to yesterday. And I'm heading home. So I resisted temptation. I a thousand percent walked Barnes and Noble because it's in the same shopping center. I picked up a buy one, get one book set. And then I eventually put them back down because I don't need them. But I did do a little bit of a browse. I was kind of curious if the new Rebecca Stroll book was going to be out. But then I was like, it's going to be out on Tuesday. Just wait a couple days and just buy it after it comes out because I'm not going to stop what I'm doing to read it. But anyway, I don't remember if there's a Barnes and Noble special edition of it, but I kind of thought there was. I don't know. I just wanted to see it. But I did see the new Heather Gutenkopf book was already out, which was one of the buy one get ones. And When Sleeping Girls Lie by Faraday Abike Amita is out, which I'm going to start listening to today. So I wound up not reading anything else last night and fine. I was plagued by that back pain. I did the dumb thing where I googled it, <laughs> but it was like this sharp on and off back pain for like a couple hours last night. I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I knock wood. Of course there is none because I'm sitting in the car. I feel much better today. I feel fine today. I was a little bit gun shy about getting in the car because it started when I was in the car yesterday, but I'm hoping when you Google it, of course, it leads to all sorts of terrible things, but one of the things could be like a nerve thing. I also feel like maybe I've been having, not feel like, I a thousand percent have been having some like inflammation, which I talked to my doctor about. Um, so maybe it was just sort of a manifestation of that. I don't know. Anyway, I feel better today, but I definitely was slowed down and a little bit distracted last night. So I just kind of took it a little bit easy. I did like chory kind of stuff. I did my laundry and stuff like that. And then I wound up watching the end of Vanderpump Rules because I had watched, I had like half an hour to go. Still my garbage show. And I watched another episode of How to Get Away with Murder, which I'm just obsessed with. And then I went to sleep and it was wonderful. So I did a bunch of writing this morning, which was good. It's slow. I mean, I'm in this like kind of skimming each chapter, not to edit, not to do stuff, 
I'm hoping this car doesn't park right across from me. He's going to park right across from me. No, he's not. Anyway, so it was good, but it's slow. Yep, they're going to park right across from me. Come on, dude. It's a giant parking lot. I mean, park wherever you want. They're going to back in. Anyway. It's slow going, but it was good. And then I haven't gone for a walk yet today. So it was drizzly and overcast when I woke up today. They are doing a horrible parking job, by the by. I'm a terrible parker, um, but I'm gonna judge. They are taking up two spaces for sport. Don't you just hate when people do stuff like this? There's plenty of space here, so sure you can take up two, but like, don't be that guy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I haven't gone for a walk yet. I'm going to go after lunch. So it was like drizzly and dreary this morning. And to me, there's just no point because I know the sun was going to come out. It's definitely cooler today than yesterday, which is fine. But I'm kind of glad I had this little sneak preview of the weather because now I know to dress a little bit warmer than I did yesterday. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to make lunch and then I'm going to go for my walk. I have things to do. I need to paint my nails, things to do. But I spent some time cleaning up a little bit this morning. So you guys know I work from home. I'm at home all the time. And at the end of the workday, the last thing I wanna do was like clean my desk or organize or any of that. So I did that, took everything off it, dusted it, wiped it down, cleaned it. I was doing some good cleaning yesterday morning with dusting, vacuuming, like more detailed stuff. And then I went through some paperwork. I have another pile of paperwork I need to get through. I have a lot of paper I need to deal with. I'm not good with dealing with paper and such. So I did that this morning. I spent a little bit of time cleaning up, moving some piles. I still need to go on my unhaul. I did unhaul a good, a decent, mm, I unhaul, I don't know, whatever, 25 books or something I unhauled. I have more to go. So I just need to keep chipping away at that kind of stuff. I really want to have some kind of focus time to do like a bigger dent. My problem is because it's not a problem, but you guys know what I mean. Because I live at home and I work from home, it's very hard for me to just like have a staging area for decluttering and things like that because I'm all over the place all the time. And it's just a reason that I'm putting off doing anything. So anyway, but all is good. I had a good night's sleep, which was good. I'm excited. My back feels better. I don't want to keep jinxing, jinxing myself. And yeah, I am suitably hungry. So I'm going to go home and do all that. And then I'm very excited to take a walk because it is now beautiful outside and I'm here for the sunshine of it all. So that's what's up. And I'll let you guys know what else is up later. for my walk <laughs> pulling out headphones very lovely walk it's beautiful out I'm glad I waited till later in the day because it was definitely warmer and sunnier and kind of not so many people out so I feel like it was just a good time to go which was great so I am into where sleeping girls lie I a thousand percent have been calling her Faraday and I don't know why it's Farida is the author's name so shame on me for getting it wrong this entire time so this is the 17 hour audiobook I'll pop a picture of it up over here the cover is gorgeous but I'm really enjoying it so far so I don't want to do one of those things where I'm like this is where I'm at so you know everything that's happening but 17 hour audiobook so obviously for some context it's a little bit of kind of a building the scene I would say at the beginning of the book because we need to have some context. But this is also one of those books where I feel like it would be great to physically read it and listen at parts because we're getting, none of this spoils anything. This is more about how the plot is constructed, but there's like a chapter zero. There's kind of like a five weeks later. There's some cryptic messages types of things that are woven in where I almost feel like I'm missing out on a couple things from the audiobook. So it's on my list of books to buy. Again, this one comes out 
Tuesday as of when I'm filming this. By the time you guys see this vlog, it'll already be out in the world. So we'll see. Like I said, they had it at Barnes & Noble today and I didn't pick it up, but maybe I'll wind up ordering it because I almost feel like I'd be better served kind of doing a combination, but we'll see. So anyway, Sade has just started at boarding school when the book opens, what we know out of the gate. So for one, I will say there's a lot of trigger warnings at the beginning of this book. I will not rattle them off here because I know everyone kind of has a feeling about trigger warnings. I've talked about it before. I'm not someone who needs them. They don't, typically there's like one or two things I really don't want to read about specifically, but she has them on her website so you can go to her website and search for trigger warnings so they're at the front of the book and also it said there's more on her website which i haven't gone to yet so what we know from the beginning is Sade has just started at this boarding school her father passed away a month earlier her mom passed away when she was 10 so she's 16 years old she's a third year she's a junior in high school when the book starts and she is kind of a month late into school starting. So not only is she kind of new transferring into the school, she's also a month late into the semester. So she's our outsider looking in, she's already behind the eight ball. So she meets her roommate who is Elizabeth, who's giving her like the tour around campus, introduces her to her best friend, Boz, and we get to see the three of them kind of exploring and getting to know each other at the beginning. So there's more happening from there, but that's kind of like your groundwork. So we get to meet some of the other students, things are starting to happen, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So I liked Ace of Spades, but I'm definitely way addicted to boarding school books, kind of like the way I'm addicted to college books. So I'm enjoying the boarding school aspect of this. And so far I'm having a good time with it. So this one, like I said, it's a longer one. It's gonna take me a little bit and I'm just having fun with it. I really am. So that's good news. And then when I had lunch today, which normally I don't always like switch gears like this. It just depends on what mood I'm in. But this is the perfect book to switch gears with. So this is Meet the Benedettos. I think I showed this to you guys yesterday. So I am 70 pages into this, not super far in. It's a 243 page book. So it's not a huge one. I find weirdly enough that sometimes it takes me longer to read smaller books, which makes no sense at all. I don't know if anybody else has that thing, but I read a little bit while I was eating lunch today, which was good. I'm really enjoying this book. So this has really good humor to it. There's really good wit. It says, I talked about this yesterday, where it says hot and fun. So I don't know if it's going to be steamy. There's been a little allusion to hotness, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. So we'll see, but it's early pages. So we have kind of like the unlikely, I'm hoping it's gonna be like a hate to love between Lily and Will. So we'll see what happens, but so far I'm enjoying it. Again, kind of the inside Hollywood and things that I'm assuming are allusions to real things. I don't wanna read anything about what inspired this book or any kind of research until I'm done. I was looking at something about another book. I'm always researching what's coming out next. I'm always trying to look like, am I gonna be interested in this book? And I was looking up something about a book and I'm not gonna tell you what the book is, but in the Publishers Weekly review of something I was reading, it said something that didn't necessarily spoil, like a, it didn't like spoil something like this is the killer or something like that, but it gave away something I would have rather not known. <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to decide what books to read when I don't want to read a lot about the books. So I just don't want to accidentally see anything about anything, but I will look into it when I finish reading the book. But so far I'm really enjoying it. So it's just a fun one. It's exactly what I want. And yeah, it's really, really good. And then, so today's St. Patrick's Day, the day that I'm filming this, which has no impact on my life in the sense of like parading or anything like that. Been there, done that. Although I do have a little bit, again, not that I would be doing it today necessarily, but when I lived in Boston, when the South Boston parade would fall on a Sunday on St. Patrick's Day was the best. Cause usually it was the Sunday before and every once in a blue moon, St. Patrick's Day would be on a Sunday like it is today, which was just the best off the rails party you could possibly imagine. They were just the absolute best time. But anyway, I realized one of my, and of course I don't have it handy because that would make too much sense, but one of the books on my 12 and 24, that book Kala 
by Colin Walsh is he's an Irish author and I was like man I should have like made a point to read that and have it coincide so I can still read it whenever I want but I really need to get cracking on bingo which reminds me I was gonna look when the first day of spring is just to see how feasible it would be for me to try and try and make this happen for you guys hold on why is it that I don't know how to use my phone when somebody's watching me first day of spring 2024 it's like they know what I'm looking for <sighs> Tuesday March 19th really well friends by the time you see this you will know Springo was not it. We are not doing it for the first day of spring. Why is it not like on the 23rd or something like that? Like last year, wasn't that when it was like, I don't remember. Last year it kind of coincided with when I started my new job. And anyway, yeah, Tuesday, March 19th at 11.06 PM. So sorry that I missed that date. I don't know why I thought I had another week. My timeline. I have no sense of time right now. So anyway, still thinking about bingo. I actually put it on my to-do list that I wrote yesterday and stay tuned for that. So that'll be coming. I have a couple exciting things coming in April, which I'm excited about. And you guys will hear about them when they happen. And other than that, I don't really feel like there's too, too much happening. So I'm getting into the vortex of time. So yeah, 527. I want to get cracking on my night so it doesn't totally get away from me and pick a nail color, which I don't know what I want to do. And I'm like, oh, I should have painted my nails green. I usually don't do like kitschy stuff like that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I've lost it, you guys. All right. So the, the overarching headline is I had a good day. I had a good weekend. Did I get everything on my list done? No. Do I always feel like I'm going to be five steps behind? Yes. Did I enjoy the general pace and rhythm of my weekend? Yes. Do I feel like I got a good night's sleep? Yes. I feel a little bit more well rested and I don't know what I'm going to be in the mood for tonight. I will say when I was walking, I felt like my back was tweaking a little bit. It feels okay. Also, It's right freaking here. I'm like, oh, I don't have the book anywhere near me. And then I turn to the right and it's in. Yes, I have books piled underneath my coffee table right now because that's the situation we're in. Anyway, I'm 12 and 24. Excited for this. Missing person, past and present timelines, group of friends. Maybe I'll read that next. As soon as I said that, you know, it's not going to happen next. Okay. Anyway, I, I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> I had a good weekend. I'm feeling pretty good. My back was bothering me. I'm so like, it was more just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I even, I had a new pair of sneakers that I bought when there was a sale a couple months ago. I even pulled those out today and wore those. Cause I was like, maybe my sneakers have seen better days, which they like totally have, but I just really, really like them. So I even wore the brand new sneakers today. I don't know. I feel okay now. So I'm going to enjoy the heat of the shower beating down on my back and making me feel better. I feel okay right now. So anyway, before I stop, start, stop feeling okay. Before I stop making sense, too late, too late. Um, I'm going to go, but I am looking forward to spending some more time physically reading tonight. And other than that, time will tell, time will tell. I also feel like I want to kind of like spa a little bit today. So maybe I'll do that too. All right. Hi everybody. Happy Monday. I wanted to come on and say hello so I could say goodbye, <laughs> but just wanted to wrap up with what was going on Sunday night this morning. I had a good night last night, got some stuff done, painted my nails, read a, bot, a, bot, read a bunch of my book. I don't just going to say a bunch and a lot, a bot, a lot of my book. And this morning I did some writing, which was really good. I did not want to get out of bed, but I'm happy to say I had a really good night's sleep, which makes all the difference in the world. 
I a thousand percent would have liked to sleep some more, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I felt like I had not like a big breakthrough, but I had a good, there's like all these little mini aha moments along the way with my writing. So I feel like I had a mini aha moment this morning, figured out a scene. There's so much rewriting to do. I'm kind of doing a very skeletal outline right now of things that need to be rewritten or freshly written, but I was feeling good about that. So definitely having the big aha moment that Thriller Fest is like two months and one week away from when I'm filming. And my goal was to have this draft finished before I went to Thriller Fest, which I mean, you can't, no regrets, right? You can't, can't change, can't change what happened. I'm kind of like, how am I not further along at this point? So I need to really get serious and kind of shift back into a NaNoWriMo mindset where I'm spending more of my like free time writing and making time to write. So I have a lot of work to do between now and then and would like to get as close to, if not done with this draft by the time I hit to Thriller Fest because I wanted to be able to like concisely talk about my book as I meet people. <laughs> so we'll see, but that's a separate story for a different day. So I have some figuring out to do there, but I, fi I didn't finish. I am like halfway through Meet the Benedettos. I'm just totally enjoying it. It's light, it's fun, it's funny. It's like the perfect book right now. It's There's levity to it, there's romance to it. It's just what I need. I'm absolutely just like gobbling it up. It's a quick read. And then I listened to some more of we're Sleeping Girls Live while I was getting dressed this morning and making breakfast, and I am really enjoying this book too. So I don't wanna talk about too much of what's happening. We've got some investigation happening now. We're getting some amateur sleuthing, which I enjoy. So, and not like in a kitschy kind of funny way, like there's definitely some weightiness to this book, but in a good way but things are starting to unfold and things are starting to happen and we're meeting some more characters and I have no idea where it's gonna go and I'm enjoying the fact that I have no idea where it's gonna go, but the narration is great so far and the story is really great so far. So I'm enjoying that. So today's game plan is work, walk, <laughs> and then figure out. I tend to get into this trap at the end of the day. Like when I sit down for dinner, I feel like I just sit down and that's the end of it. Like I just get very unmotivated to do something else after that, but I definitely want to do some planning. And yeah, I've got a lot. I got to like pull a calendar out and start to think from a writing mindset. So anyway, things that are coming down the pike. And yeah, that's kind of it. So thanks for spending the weekend with me. And I am not totally sure what video is coming next to be fully transparent. So we will all figure that one out together. And I hope everyone's doing great. I realize you're going to be watching this after the fact, but whenever you watch it, I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you had a good day. I hope you're having a good morning, whatever it is. So it was weird to sign off because you never know when people are going to be watching it. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.